Precalculus students, welcome to your uh, Ferris wheel example notes. We're going to take a look at a, a situation that starts uh, fairly simply, and we add a little complicating factor in a moment. So the situation is this, Gabe's riding a Ferris wheel. Now what I'm going to do is start, I know you guys can read, I'm not going to read all that to you, but I'm going to start by drawing what the Ferris wheel might look like. Hopefully it's circular, that's usually the preferred pathway. And I'm going to draw, remember the ground, it's saying it starts five feet above the ground. My drawing does not necessarily need to be to scale, but I'm just going to kind of sketch it so we can see what we're looking at. Based on the information I have up here, I know some things. Like for instance, I know that the point down here at the base of the Ferris wheel would be five feet above the ground. Now, I want to label that like we label our points on an XY coordinate plane. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the vertical or Y axis here as well. And then I can go back and label this point. That's the one I'm looking for. It is zero and five. It's five feet above what we're calling right here to be the origin. All right, now the middle of this Ferris wheel, we could figure that one out as well because it's a radius of 50 so we know it's going to be 0 and 55 and we could continue on and find the other points as well and so I'm finding the top bottom left and right and you can see I've got all four of those marked plus I also have of course the center of this Ferris wheel as well now this next step is, is a situation of how do you find out like the exact location. So imagine that we have uh, this kind of scenario. My center of my circle is not drawn perfectly, but you can get the idea from it anyway. Let's imagine that's horizontal. And we're going somewhere around this circle. We don't know exactly where, but I'm going to just put it up here. And I'm going to erase this 0, 055 because it's kind of in the way, but I'll mark it back over here. Okay, so what we know is that we have some unknown angle right here, theta. And if I want to find where I am at any given point around the Ferris wheel with, with respect to this angle, theta, I'm going to use my sine and cosine functions. Now there's another part of this too. We know we're going to have the, the radius is going to be involved. This is not simply a unit circle. It's basically a, well, it's a 50 unit circle. And it would be like this, our x value would be 50 times the cosine of our unknown angle. Our y value is found in a very similar fashion, 50 times the sine of our angle theta. But you'll notice that the center of this circle is not at the origin, it's at 0, 55. So I kind of have to add 55 right there just to adjust for the way I've drawn this. And it, it kind of makes sense to do it that way. Um, You'll see as we move ahead why we would do it that way instead of trying to move the origin up here. I think that, that would probably not really pay off. All right, so this is the situation right here. That's how we find any point on that unit circle. Well, 50 unit circle. All right, now here's the deal, though. Angle theta, that angle changes, and it tells us within the context of the problem how it changes. It says that for every revolution... It takes one minute or 60 seconds. So we know that this uh, angle theta is going to be a variable. It's changing at a rate of 6 degrees per second. Right now, folks, we're ready to write our parametric. Here's what it looks like. We know our x value is 50 times the cosine of our unknown angle. Well, our unknown angle is 6 times the number of seconds. We know that our y value when we're at any given point around this Ferris wheel is 50 times the sine of 6t. But as we did up here, we have to add in 55 just to account for the fact that we've basically moved the um, upward from the origin. All right, so why don't you get onto your uh, graphing calculator and graph this parametric. And you can see on my calculator here, I have this uh, function already punched in. One thing to consider, as with all parametrics, we have to be really aware of the window situation. I set my time to go 0 to 60. That's because it, said it takes 60 seconds to complete a lap. Uh, the t-step, you could do smaller than 1, but what I found was when I made it 
0.1 or something smaller. It just took too long. Every second was really good enough information for now. We'll narrow it down later if we need to. And then you can see the X and Y values. I just wanted to make sure I could see the graph. And when I hit graph, we have ourselves a lovely Ferris wheel. Now you'll notice it looks a little bit like uh, not so much as a circle, more as a um, an ellipse. Uh, so if you wanted to really see the circle, you could hit zoom 5 to square that thing. It's going to adjust your window settings a little bit, but now you can see that it is truly a circular ride. All right, so there is part A. It, one cool thing, by the way, if you hit trace, take a look at this. You can figure out where Gabe is at any point along the ride. At zero seconds, he's at the point 50, 55. Well, we set that up. That's how we wanted it. But if you wanted to go ahead and say, okay, well, where's he going to be at, you know, 10 seconds? Well, you could do that. He'd be at an X value at 25 and a Y value of, I don't even know what the number was. It was there, though, and you could find it, too. At 15 seconds, he's at the top. At 30, he should be, and he is, all the way at the left. At 45, he's at the bottom. And then if he went around to 60, he'd complete that pathway all the way back to uh, the beginning. All right, so this is good. We have a Ferris wheel. You can trace it. You can move around and see the pathway that Gabe is taking. All right, and now for the complicating factor. Uh, Gabe and his buddy uh, Jason decide that uh, just riding a Ferris wheel is just not enough for them. They have to uh, make things more complex. So what they do is decide that when Gabe gets to the 3 o'clock, what we considered the starting point, of the ride, Jason is going to throw a football at, excuse me, to him. Uh, Jason's standing 75 feet from the base of the Ferris wheel. He's over kind of to the right. We'll, we'll add him to our diagram. And he throws the ball 80 feet per second in an angle of 110. Now I'm going to go back to our diagram and kind of sketch this on here to show you what this would look like. Now, one thing we're going to do, and you can read it on your notes, I don't have it up there anymore, but we're basically assuming that Jason is releasing the ball from ground level. Uh, that would be quite the skill to be able to do such a thing, but we're going to assume that he's doing that. All right, and he's throwing the ball like that. Now, as we know, uh, gravity is going to have an impact. This is going to take a parabolic shape. And it said that we have an angle of uh, 110 degrees. Now, you'll notice we put that angle in terms of an obtuse angle. It's basically like an angle theta that's measured like we measure angles around the unit circle. We could call this a 70 degree angle, but then we would have to use that supplement. Anyway, it makes the math work a lot easier just to use 110. So that is what we're going to do. All right, so now we're trying to see uh, what the the pathway of the football looks like. So uh, we've actually done these kind of problems before with the pathway of something that's flying through the air like this. So we know that the x value is going to be, well, he starts at the point 75 and 0. I didn't mark that on here, but remember he was 75 feet, right? So I'm going to mark that as 75, 0. And that kind of helps when we uh, find that x value. We know we have to add 75 because that's the starting point. And then we're adding in the effects of the throw, which would be um, the 80, which is the speed, 80 feet per second, times time. But remember, the throw isn't entirely horizontal. Some of that force is uh, vertical, some is horizontal, and we can just put the cosine of 110 degrees here. For the y value, we're going to do the same thing. Now, this starting point on Y is at ground level. Again, he has the magical ability to throw from ground level. Congrats to you, Jason. All right, so ADT times the sine of 110 degrees would represent uh, the vertical portion of the throw. But don't forget, when we deal with the uh, vertical aspects, we have to consider that gravity is eventually going to win that battle. So we're going to do minus 16T squared. All right, now go ahead and add that to your graphing calculator. Put that as uh, x2 and y2. You can see I've got it on here right here, 75 plus 80t times the cosine of 110 and 80t sine of 110 and then minus the gravity. Now this is kind of cool when you take a look at the graph. It's like you can see the Ferris wheel and you can see the path of the football. Now this looks a little choppy. It looks like it's going one direction, then it turns, then it turns, then it turns. 
when we decrease that t-step we'll be able to see um, a little bit cleaner uh, setup there all right there's one more thing that we have to do here it's to find the minimum distance between gabe and the football we're going to use something you're all familiar with and that is the distance form so we've all used the distance formula we know it pretty well and we're going to plug that in on our uh, parametric equations now here's how we're going to do this we're going to keep it pretty simple um, at some level we're going to say that x3 or you could do x4 if you prefer but we're going to leave this in here for future use by the way is equal to t we're just going to put equals t all right and we're going to leave that in there we're not going to take that out of our calculator uh, so just put it in as, as t and honestly the x value is not that important what's really important is the y value y3 is equal to the square root of and now here's where you have to uh you have to use the information that's in your graph and it looks like this it'll be x 1 t minus x 2 t quantity squared plus and then we'll do y 1 t minus y 2 t quantity squared square root of that whole thing now some of you may be saying well mr hale i'd love to do that but i have no idea where x 1 t and x 2 t what is this craziness that you speak of so let's look and find that all right so i'm i'm going to go down to x three and I'm just going to type in T as I said there now I'm going to go to X or excuse me Y three and I'm going to hit a square root because well it's the distance formula I'm going to open a set of parentheses and then here's where you have to think a little bit uh, this X one T and X two T here's where we get it it's alpha and if you if you have the new operating system it's in F four you can pull it right out of there now if you don't have this operating system um, come talk to me and I'll show you where to find it on on the more um, ancient devices all right and we can just punch it in like you see it there now the beauty of this is once you get this in one time we'll just leave it we're not gonna because we're gonna use it on other problems uh, not every problem needs it though so we can basically just kinda turn off this graph uh, but have it available so anytime we need to use the distance formula we have it at our disposal. So it should look something like that. X1T minus X2T quantity squared plus Y1T minus Y2T quantity squared. Now again, what this is doing is it's going back and finding out how far are these two points from each other. And so at this point, this basically becomes a calculator problem. I'm going to make my graph look, my calculator screen a little bit larger so it's easier for you guys to see um, as you look at this and I may have just overdone it. No, I think you can see it now. All right, so that's what it should look like. Now let's go to the graph, all right? And when I graph it, it's throwing in a third graph here. It's kind of hard to see because it's black, It's but it's this thing right here. It's not really valuable for us as far as the visual aspect of it. Here's what's valuable. I'm going to hit trace, and I don't want to trace the Ferris wheel. I don't even want to trace the football. I want to trace X3, Y3, which is my distance formula. So at time zero, the football is you know, about 60 feet away from Gabe. And we're going to trace this and see how close we can get. Well, look at that at one, it's only 2.33 seconds, and then it's much further away. Now, what this tells me is the minimum distance occurs between zero and two. So I'm going to narrow this down and go zero to two. And I'll change that t-step to 0.1. This is going to give me a lot smaller view of what's going on. But now you can see it. There's the football. There's the Ferris wheel. But again, I want to trace the distance. And I'm looking for a minimum distance. And so I can see I'm still declining. Oh, it was down to like 2.3. That was exactly at one second. So again, I don't know that it's at exactly one. But I know it's between 0.9 and 1.1 and I can change that t-step this will get it to the nearest hundredth of a second which is the standard we want to meet so nearest hundredth of a second again trace x3 y3 and I'm looking for the minimum value and so as I trace I can see it's declining declining and then all of a sudden it turned around right there is my minimum value so at 99 hundredths of a second so just one one hundredth of a second less than one I'm the ball is only like 2.3 feet away 
I have a feeling that Jason and Gabe may have just pulled off the impossible and been able to catch a football um, from thrown from the ground to the Ferris wheel. That sounds like a lot of fun. I'm not sure that they would encourage that type of behavior at amusement parks, but uh, if you have any luck with it, let me know because I want to go there and try it myself.